Hey, this is Dave Pryor. Welcome to the Reluctant Agilist or Drunken PM Radio or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Mark Hodgson is here. Mark, thanks for taking time out of your day today. You're welcome. Looking forward um, to this. Me too. We're going to talk all about personal Kanban. So Mark is somebody that took the classes recently, and we got into this conversation about um, personal Kanban, and you mentioned that he's been using it in all these different areas of his life. So I wanted to, to go through that because a lot of people, when they start doing Agile, can't figure out, if they can't use it at work, they can't figure out where to start. And Mark is a great example of somebody who's using it all over the place. And he's gone some like extra geeky steps with it that I'm excited to talk about. So that's what we're going to do. And before we do all that, Mark, could you share a little bit about your background and, and what you do? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Dave. Yeah, so I work for a company uh, called Aspirant. Um, we are a data and analytics company uh, based here in Atlanta. Um, I have a project management, product management background um, in global supply chain and in data warehousing. Um, our firm specializes in data and analytics, but we have an execution practice where we have PMI project managers, uh, scrum masters, and and product owners, uh, and we will consult um, on on various projects. And that's the that's the practice that I work in. Okay. So, so just before we start, are your PMI project managers and your scrum masters are they sometimes the same person? Like, do you have people that can do both? Yeah, we do, and and, and okay. we, yeah, but but most of us kind of focus, kind of lean one way or the other uh, yeah. a little bit more. Uh, okay. I certainly, you know, I went through the, all the the PEM, PMBOK training, never got certified, so I'm used to doing a waterfall project. But I, I've, right. I've I've been trying to do agile for the last couple of years and taken both of your two two courses from from Dave. I took the Scrum Master and the Product Owner course. Um, one we did live and one we did virtual, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and and you come. So one of the things we do for the I do for the people that take the classes with me online, we have a lean coffee twice a month, and Mark is a frequent participant in that too which is always it's really neat for me to get to see how people are doing all this stuff so um all right so how would you describe personal kanban and what interested you in it first well um yeah so personal kanban is a way to get yourself organized right with uh with the work that you have to do um dave had recommended a book uh by jim benson the personal kanban uh book and i i've always been kind of fascinated with to-do lists and how to organize your work you know back in the geez back in the 80s i was into day timers and then into wow. like kobe stuff and <laughs> yeah timers, i mean man. i know i know i know I had a, yeah um <laughs> You know, I can't always lose kinda... this book. If I lose this book, I'm screwed. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And so I've always been fascinated about prioritization, and it's just kind of one of the things I geek on. You know, getting things done. How do you measure progress and that sort of stuff? So uh, it really, I, I picked up the book, read it, thought I'd give it a shot, um, and now I think I've uh, maybe over embraced it. But I, but I really, <laughs> no, really, I think what you did is really cool, and I think Jim's <laughs> going to be really excited about it too. Um, all right. So the thing that I, I would like to point out here is like for me, when I started with personal Kanban, the re the thing that drove me to it, I am also one of those productivity geeks that is constantly trying new systems and seeing what works better. But um, I needed to learn about Kanban. And I didn't have any way to do Kanban at work. So I thought, well, this isn't the same thing, but it's close. It's kind of rooted in the same idea. So I got a coach and I actually ran a big, long personal Kanban experiment for like six months trying different things out week after week to see what would work and trying to figure out what what it helped me understand about how I was doing. And I think for me, that's the coolest part is that it's constantly teaching me stuff about choices that I make and how am I reacting to this and why am I doing that? And I don't know, just studying my own choices, I think is really super narcissistic probably, but fun at the same time. But you mentioned flow. So for you, you're really into flow, right? Yeah. So so I actually had an opportunity to use Kanban at work and 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 got started with it a little bit and 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 never really uh, you know never really got it to go the way I wanted it to go. But but when I started doing it for myself, I didn't have any sort of constraints or delegations or anything like that. And I could really see how it all works together. Um okay. so yeah. So what did you start with? 
So I started with a personal Kanban for my homework, right? So all the okay. things that I have to do around the house. And um, I'll just, actually, I can show you this one. So who gets to add to this list? Oh, well. <laughs> you or your product owner? Yeah, well, it's me and okay. uh, and my wife. Uh, so she'll add a few things here and there. Um, and uh, so if, now I have five columns in this, in this, this board, but this is all of my sort of homework, right? So house projects, fun stuff, uh, whatever, right? So big list of to do's in the backlog. I, I separate on the up next thing so I can kind of filter out a lot of the, the, the noise, you know, the right. things that I'm working on at the time and doing, and then uh, what, what I'm waiting on. And of course, what's done. And at the end of the week, Sunday, Monday, I'll, I'll, I'll take all those done ones off and throw them away. Um, and just okay. it, that gets it all kind of cleared out. Um, and so I kind of use that. Yeah. And what about the color? The colors, do they have significance here? They, they do and they don't. Um, I, you know, sort of that continuous improvement thing. I've been playing around with the colors to see what works the best. But okay. uh, I have, you know, green and stuff that is around money or things we have to do for the house right orange okay. is fun stuff right just you know and it just gives you a quick visual you know where what am i working i have a bunch of orange stuff in the doing thing or you know am i doing too much fun stuff and not enough work stuff yeah uh, and i gotta add i so i started doing this uh towards the end of the year end of the year last year and um i have my my son and my daughter are living at home because of covid they've got you know they have they're adults but they're not quite moved out my wife is here they've all picked up a, a kanban board themselves so they're they're doing something similar as well uh, so we've all kind of embraced this geekiness so okay so i want to i want to stick with the work fun balance thing for a second i have you i i see that you violated your whip limit for the doing column already um but i'm one <laughs> he's got a whip limit of three up there and four cards in the column have you been paying attention to like is there a balance of so much work stuff and so much fun stuff i mean did you learn anything there um i would say so i i you know I'll try to pull a fun thing in for the weekend um okay you know do a do a hobby you know i, I like to brew beer so i put that up there um you know, I want to go do some, some motorcycle riding, but I haven't been able to do that because of the weather, but it's still out there as a, as a fun thing to do. But because that takes up so much time, you know, yeah. it, it takes away from doing stuff that, you know, your, your personal honeydew lists, right? Okay. So I'm curious about one thing, because I know where we're going with one of the other boards, but there's nothing up here. I don't think that's music related. Um. That's Where it. does that fit in? Or so, is that like, do you not use this to plan your daily activities? Is this just like, I know I have a day coming up. I got stuff I got to do. This is, um, I would say this is even more weekend stuff, right? Okay. Or, or during the week. So, so I told you I have a, a couple of different boards. Right. Um, we had talked about that and sort of the prep. Um, this is homework. I have a work, work one. Um, and for me, it's, it's a, um, each board is, is for a subject area you think of it like a different project mm -hmm. i look at the board it's like okay i'm going to go work on some stuff for home and usually it's saturday and sunday right so that's when i'm usually focused on this board in particular right yeah um, i don't have any music stuff up here because a lot of that is routine i don't have the routine stuff of practicing and, okay. and that sort of thing in here but and also we're not gigging a lot right now. So, yeah, you know, I don't have a lot of workload. I'm, sh I'm certain that as we start to ramp back up again, there will be a, you know, get ready for this practice or get ready for this gig. Those will be stickers up here as well. Okay. Now, are you somebody who is able to maintain like separation throughout your day between work life and personal life? To a certain degree. Yes. Um, okay. But what I, what I do have on my work board, which we'll get to in a minute is personal tasks. So if I'm sitting at the, okay. and a lot of those are computer related, right? They might right. be on both boards. So um, I'll look over there and I'll say, yep, uh, I need to work on that, but that's a computer thing. So while I'm sitting at my desk, let me just remind myself that I have to do it, especially if it's a, one of the more urgent tasks or it has a deadline. Okay, cool. Right? Yeah. So, so as I'm looking around for what I want to do for my day, I look at the board and I'm like, oh, there is that personal thing. I need to slot that in, whether I do it at lunch or, you know, yeah. 
15 minutes over here, but you know, I got to do it and I got to do it in work hours because maybe I have to call somebody, you know, that's open or closed. Right. Okay. So I want to, I'm going to try to like point things out as we go through it that kind of like strike me to me. That's interesting because it's, it's a waste. You're duplicating effort, but it's a conscious choice because you need that in the other place. Just like you don't have to put your routine things in your board. I have to put them in mine or I skip them. I had a conversation with Tony Ann about this one time. She's like, well, if you do it every day, why do you put it in the list? I'm like, cause I, I might forget. Like I'm terrified. I'll forget. Um, so I think that, that these kinds of choices and, and how much severity or discipline you need in one area over another um, that, that to me is what is so cool about this way of working is that if you're paying attention, you're doing retrospectives on it, you're constantly seeing new things. You're like, huh, that's super weird. I didn't realize I was that like over the top obsessive about this one thing. I'm going to have to do something about that. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. So, so this is the stuff on the weekends. And then can we look at one of your other boards? Yeah. So, um, I think the one that you thought was kind of cool. So the other thing is, is, you know, I'm using all sorts of different technologies here, right? So I like Trello for this board. This is my bookings for the band and I'll make a shameless plug for the band. It's brewery road. We are a a cover band. We have a few originals out there. Um, but based in, uh, based in Atlanta. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, this is an, you know, it's a little, it's a little thin at the moment because we haven't been doing, our last gig was in February and we haven't there is booked a pandemic. There it's is a pandemic going on. So, yeah. um, but you know, I was really struggling with contacting different venues and trying to get bookings and, and trying to remember that I contacted them, how long ago it was and mm-hmm. um, all of that sort of thing. And then you know, just making sure I followed up. So I started using this and it works a lot better than just trying to search through your emails and figure out when was the last time you called somebody. Um, And in here, um, and this is like we talked, this is more of a flow than like a sprint type of thing. It just keeps up with where I am with various uh, venues or or festivals. Okay. So I have a backlog of ideas. There's quite a few here of just places I want to reach out to. Yeah. Um, you know, the net, the kind of the up next here is the ready to contact folks. Okay. Um, I'm in a conversation about a booking with a, one of the breweries here in Atlanta. Okay. Um, so that's in doing. And then of course, once it's booked, it sits over here and then we've got some dead ones, you know, that, that are not taking bookings for whatever reason. I like to keep them out there in case I, you know, get a chance to reach out to them again and see okay. if they change their mind kind of thing. And now, then do you assign any- like dates to remind yourself, like on this date, I have to call this guy back. I do. Um, I'm using the free version of Trello, so I'm okay. limited to what dates I can put in there, but I do use the due date to okay. give myself a reminder. Um, okay. I didn't realize it had the limitation. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So this is kind of managing the band's business. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So if you are somebody who has a daytime job and some sort of side gig or side hustle, this is the kind of thing you can do to, to manage that. Yep. Um, okay. Now, what about the one you use for the actual band? Yeah. So again, um, it's all in sort of terms of a flow. So we're a cover band with some originals on. And so again, we have a bunch of ideas of songs that we'd like to learn and play. So I keep that in a backlog and I used to keep all of this in a Google word doc and copy and paste and move things up and down things. We know things we'd like to know. And then when I started playing with this, I was like, well, this is perfect. Right. So, um, now this is my board. It's not really the band's board, but I sort of manage what we, you know, what our practices look like and that sort of thing. So, um, uh, you know, we have, again, songs we'd like to know, songs that we know is over here. Um, you know, what I want to make sure that we practice on the next set and the next next session. And then I've got my own personal list here, which is, hey, Mark, you need to go out and, and refresh, you know, learn some of this stuff or, or refresh it um, because okay. you're, you, you suck at it. So you need to get better. <laughs> How, I don't think you can really suck at playing American Girl. I mean, that <laughs> nobody can play that song badly. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so this uh, the thing I was going to ask about this is whether or not they had access to it. So this is you kind of keeping track of all that for yourself. Um, 
you're yeah. telling them what stuff this is what we're going to do next i i give them i think i've invited them to look at this um but they're they they're quite happy to sort of delegate sideways to me I try, um, try to imagine you know? the conversation with your drummer drummer i need you to go into trouble like what <laughs> yeah it's, it's kind of <laughs> bang fists yeah yeah okay. yeah okay cool um all right now can we look at your your work board i guess that yeah. would be a cool thing to check out yeah so now now we're going into to work mode come on go away there so, so i want to while you're loading up i just want to add one thing so for me the the musical stuff is part of like self maintenance stuff and all that and all my work stuff are all together in one board. I am not able to maintain separate areas of focus because um, I just forget to look at the other ones, but I want to just share this with folks so they can get a sense of it. When I asked Jim Benson about it, he said that it's like zooming in and zooming out, right? So right now, you know, you might be on the weekend. So you're looking at, I'm going to, you know, smoke bacon or ride my bike or whatever. Now I'm going to zoom over here and look at work and you can kind of move in and out of different areas and keep everything up at one time. Right. Cause you yep. have all these different ports in play. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Right. So I, if I know that I need to focus on something and like I said, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'll have a, a, a focus on ban on, on my, my other board, which is sort of a high level thing. It's just, you know, Hey, yeah. shift your focus over here and take a look at it. Cause you got to plan out the next practice. And then I use that tool to plan out the practice. Okay. You know, um, yeah. And if you think about, you know, some of some of the roles that that our scrum masters play, um, you may have mul you may be on multiple teams trying to help them to manage, and you yeah. wouldn't have all of those multiple teams on the same board, right? It's so, very but, confusing when you have that, yeah. Right. So, I mean, there are yeah. tools like I used Azure DevOps with a with Sorry. a team. <laughs> what so say what you just said again i said that and for some reason siri decided to activate so. <laughs> um so i had a team with multiple projects we used azure devops um and it has a good way it has quite a hierarchical hierarchical structure that allows you to kind of separate things and also have them in the same space so that's just a a, a sort of a side note okay. um so this is my work board. And again, I, I go with kind of a five, five or six column. It's very similar to my personal one, but this is all focused on work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's up next? Uh, you know, if I have meetings that are scheduled, they're kind of in a waiting column, but you know, they, they're on a hold. And yeah. then I've got my backlog of, of things to do. Um, what I'm working on now, what's out there and waiting, and then what's complete. And then we have this, I have this thing called chopping block which is just something I decided not to do or, you know, was dropped. Right. Yeah. Uh, didn't really do anything on it. So I don't get credit for it, but, but it's, you know, it's no longer there. Okay. And the color coding is by project or product. It's or by what? focus area. So uh, okay. whether it's billable or it's an opportunity or it's networking or it's personal. Right. Okay. So, so my, my personal is in blue. Yeah. Okay. So I, the thing that I want to point out here is like there's different ways of breaking the work up in it. And it, when you were talking about the different boards, I'm thinking it's sort of like compartmentalizing, like here's the band stuff, here's the family stuff, here's the work stuff. But even within the work stuff, you have to subdivide things again. And I think for different people, maybe this depends on, I should probably ask Jim about this, how, um, how you think about work how you do that in your brain. If you're somebody that has a bunch of separate things, which sounds to me like a really good thing, I, I'm not able to maintain that. For me, it's like the work is the whole life. My life is the work and all of the stuff I do is all mashed together, whether it's you know meditating or creating a podcast or doing a class, it's all the same stuff. So I don't, I guess I have one client and that's me maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it does create a lot of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I, and and back in my daytimer days, I, everything went on the same list. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and I would just, I would actually, when I got really busy, I would color code. Mm -hmm. It was black if it was work, and blue if it was personal. Yeah. Right. And maybe red if it was, geez, get this done now, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So. Now, have you have you ever done any experiments with? 
determining what whether the work is going to have like a positive or a negative effect for you or it's like this is energizing this is exhausting this will build me up this will take me down this is restorative um have you done looked at anything like that no i haven't actually okay. that's okay yeah it's um no i know we've talked about that in in some of the lean coffees um yeah and it's certainly something that strikes my interest but but no um you know i'm typically just trying to keep moving right okay make cool. sure i got enough on the backlog and and not get overwhelmed by a notebook of things and you know where everything's all sort of written down and yeah so when you have all this stuff here does that make you feel less overwhelmed because you've got a place to put it all and you're not like oh my gosh i have to carry this around in my head yes okay. it and i don't have to copy it right so i used to right. keep it all in a notebook right and over time you know if i'm sitting in a meeting just write down oh i got to do this right and then i would spend you know sort of that what you were calling waste right i would go yeah. back through my notebook and copy those things onto one to-do list yeah right so now now i put it in one place it's on the backlog i do spend a, you know an hour or so each week just making you know walking through the backlog and seeing if there's anything i need to pull forward right. and i prioritize it as well um but yeah no i don't feel like i'm losing things it's i know it's there and the other thing is with with a with a tool like um, smartsheet which i'm using for for work i can hide the columns right yeah. So I'm not looking at the backlog. So just hide the backlog column, right? Okay. Hide the done column. I don't have to look at how many things, get it down to what what is the up next, right? Yeah. So that's your your next four or five things that you're gonna work on. And then it's not so overwhelming. As long as you promise yourself to go through the backlog and pull things forward and you get comfortable with that, you can hide it. You don't have to look at it every day. Yeah. Do you find that I have, I have a thing with the boards where I start to not see things like you've got all the songs we know. I, I would be going down that list and after like four or five of them, I I'm looking at them and maybe like even saying the words, but nothing's happening in my brain. And I have to like stop and like refocus myself on it. Does that happen to you? Or I don't know if that's just me thing, maybe. Well, I think what happens to me in a similar vein is that I, I can look at a personal task that I don't really yeah. want to do. And I can look at it again and again and again. Okay and and still not get it done and that's where the 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 board helps and hurts right it's like yeah. god if i keep looking at this one thing you know i, I just well and that's it. the question to ask is like why why is it why, still there yeah right why am and, i not doing it why is it still there right right um i've started to i've gone back to like a each day a, a paper-based list i was like trying to figure out if bullet journaling was something I wanted to try. And I ended up at this place where I have like a notebook and each day I put in all the tasks and there's stuff that I recopy over every single day because they're like daily activities. And it's totally wasteful. And it's really, really important. It's like the tax of writing it down gives it value for me. And so like a week and a half ago, I was like, this is stupid. I'm taking this course with Jim. I'm going to only switch to electronic. I'm just going to use a board. And after like three days, I was in like a complete state because I need my notebook and a pencil. <laughs> like, I have to, I've, I'm finding that I kind of need to find, you know, come up with a mix of both to be, I don't know if it helps me get more stuff done, but it helps me feel more, more grounded, I guess. Yeah. There's, um, and I know I've, that's what I've done. Right. And you get you. So I always ran into this sort of balance between, okay, let me make sure I got everything copied down for today. And oh my gosh, I just copied 10 things and there's no way I'm going to get 10 things done today. Right. Right. So, and just constantly struggling with that, or I've copied this thing now 10 times. I just need to get it done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, were you on the call the other day when we were talking, when Jonathan was saying about how he doesn't have the thing, the guilt of the things he's not doing? Or do you already go? Okay. So we had, we, in this lean coffee the other day, we were talking about, different ways of approaching work. And, and this does tie back to the subject. Just bear with me for a second. Um, I have found with myself that when I, I mean, I, I pack my day with more than I'm going to do every day. And that's something I'm currently trying to fix. But I always look at it like, oh, I need to do all these things. I don't come at it from the perspective of, I only have this much times, so which things am I going to put into the basket? Because I'm always thinking about all the things I'm not putting in the basket. So like, whatever I'm doing, I might really need to do but in the back of my head, there's the other thing I'm not doing, and that's weighing on me. My wife doesn't do that. 
she selects the things she's going to do and she l lets go of everything else. Jonathan said the same thing. He's like, I'm that same way. I don't, I don't care. Like if I'm not doing it, it doesn't matter to me. But his girlfriend's not like that at all. Um, and I'm wondering with what you just said about putting the things in the list, do you stress out about the stuff that you're, even if you're doing the most important thing, are you worried about the things you're not doing? I, I get distracted by them. Yes, but I don't worry okay. about them. Uh, I, okay. I, I, I feel like I can compartmentalize, I mean, from a personal perspective, I can compartmentalize, yeah. you know, I'm working on work stuff now, right? And okay. or I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking, you know, I really ought to do that. But let me get this big rock thing done, right? Let yeah, me, let's get let's get that done. And once I immerse myself in a, you know, in a task that takes an hour, all the rest of them, I don't even think about. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've always got that, like, it's like... Dude, dude, what about the thing? I'm like, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can we talk a little bit about your family and how and and the, the personal side of stuff and how that's helping them? Yeah. So so um, it you know they're not they're not they don't embrace this geeky stuff like I do. But um, you know I have two um, artistic kids um, and they're I shouldn't call them kids they're adults now. But um, you know one's one's a, a theater major just recently graduated. The other one is an artist. Um, and they have trouble focusing on getting stuff done. Um, and so uh, I was doing sort of daily check-ins with my son, uh, you know, kind of stand-ups, right? Right after he graduated, are you getting a job? What are you doing? You know, da da da, da. Like a project manager. You got Did it. you do the thing? <laughs> do the do thing. The thing? <laughs> yeah. um, it's exactly it. And uh, then I started doing the personal Kanban and I said, hey guys, do, what do you think? Take a look at what I've got here. And they were both like, can can you get me one for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> so of course my daughter, you know, the artist has got hers. She's got three columns and decorated to the hilt, and she's you know got all her little stuff, you know, little projects she's working on, you know, this that and the other thing, and she's she's working the board. My son, you know, his is very utilitarian, but you know he's 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 trying to. There's there aren't a lot of gigs going on for theater majors right. at the moment but he's still reaching out to the to the local theaters and that sort of thing and that's on his list um you know looking at master's programs doing all this sort of stuff but all of that stuff sits on the board and just kind of moves through and we okay. do it and we do a daily stand-up right and try not to be the overbearing parent and and say why haven't you done the thing but just tell me what you've done and what yeah. are you working on and then i can kind of guide and throw things in i'm not judging or evaluating how much they get done but yeah. because they have to stand in front of me and tell me that <laughs> they feel some accountability right well i think that that that's a big deal though is that it gets to a place where you approach it from a curiosity standpoint instead of a judgmental standpoint yeah. like something happens I'm like well that's interesting why did i do that that was completely stupid and then i start to like unpack it and, and i learn something new um what about the retrospectives? How do you approach that? Like, how does that work for you? Well, so I don't, so that's, that's my biggest, you know, um, area of opportunity. Um, Cause <laughs> well as you know, I, I, I throw that into the lean coffee uh, quite a bit um, doing yeah. retros and I've got to get better at it. Um, but for myself, I, I look at the board at the end, end of the week and just, or on Monday mornings, typically how many things did I get done? Can I pull off and throw away? Right. And how much more okay. do I have to do? But the other thing that I use, and I think I think this may be where you're going, is I I played around with Smartsheet and got some statistics going. Yeah, this is where I sort of a, to go next. Yeah, sort of an ongoing thing. So let me share my screen. This is the ultra geeky part of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, my advice when you do this stuff is to start simple. Um, and then <laughs> then I go and 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 go full bore with the thing. So um, this is my personal dashboard and Smartsheet makes this, I'm not, I'm not a sales rep for Smartsheet, but I do like it because it's, it's kind of a uh, spreadsheet based, but also has some project management stuff in it and building these dashboards are relatively straightforward. And if you're into sort of geeking out, that's what this is good for. And also I work for a data and analytics company. So we do a lot of visualization. So I take my cues from, from the Uber geeks uh, on a lot of this stuff. Now, do you have conversations with yourself about why you can't improve your velocity and how you have to do more things? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, 
<laughs> I do look, you know, well, here's, here's case in point. So all of these, these are daily, this is a daily status, right? At the end of the day, right. kind of, and actually, you know, Thursdays is, is live based on the board. Um, and if you notice the red is what's waiting, what's been yeah. bugging the heck out of me is how much stuff is sitting and waiting and why can't I get it moving? And a lot of it is, you know, I sent an email to somebody and I'm waiting for them to get back to me and I can't do anything until they get it done. And I look at those and that's, you know, that's probably where the stress lies, right? I'm looking at those waiting things and I'm saying, is it too early to follow up with them? Okay. <laughs> and I think I'm a nag, right? And that just happens to be where I'm at, you know, this week and last week, right? Maybe in the future, it'll be, you know, I've got too many things in the up next, right? I mean, maybe you need a, a waiting on me, waiting on others separation. Well, that's, that's, I separate into up next is waiting on me to get started on it. Okay. And then waiting on somebody else is, is waiting. Right. Okay. And that's the, in, in the personal Kanban book, that's the pen that, okay. that, that uh, Jim Benson talks about. Wow. Okay. So what is, is the metrics, are they teaching you anything about flow or anything like that? Like, how are you using it to improve? So that's, so I just started putting these in at the beginning of the year. Um, okay. So I don't really have a, 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 any conclusion yet from this data, right? I've only got like three or four weeks worth of data in here. But I'm hoping that over time that these will show me, you know, what is my velocity? Is it really, is it a thing, right? Can I, can I plan, can I put in my up next on Monday 20 things and expect that I'll get 20 things done this week, right? Yeah. Um, or not, right? And and you know, what's my sort of relative, you know, amount of stuff to do, right? So it, it's right now it's growing, right? Every yeah. every week I end up with more more things to do than I've gotten done. So I've added more work than I've gotten rid of. Well, that's, so that's I'm thinking like maybe the, the balance to look for is the difference between if you added the things done and the chop. I'm assuming chopping block is stuff you decide you're not going to do, right? If you added what you got done and the chopping block together and compared that to the new things that got added in, I mean, theoretically, they should be equal. Right. But if they're out of balance, then that would be an indicator that something is amiss, too, yep. maybe. That's, I don't know, that part's really fascinating to me, like figuring out what metrics. I guess one of the advantages of this that's different than doing it at work is there's not some executive yelling at you because your velocity is not 52. You can actually right. use these metrics to teach yourself things. <laughs> right, right. And it's more, of you know, this is a, it's a curiosity too to see what can I learn from this? Is this the right yeah. thing to be measuring? Um, oh. You know, and that's, that is actually one of the things that uh, we work at as a, as a firm is making sure that our clients are looking at the right metrics. Right? Yeah. Are they measuring the right things to get the behavior that they're looking for? Yeah. Um, and this how do you cool. do that in a visualization, you know, and, and making sure that you're not just creating a dashboard with a wall of numbers or a bunch of pie graphs that, you know, don't mean anything to anybody, right? Well, people like pie, so. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what if people are watching this and they want to get started with it? What would you recommend that they do? So I would say get started, right? Okay. That's don't don't overly stress about it. Start with a whiteboard. Start with stickies. Don't don't worry about technology. Don't worry about. I mean, even if you have a, a, a Azure or a, a Jira or whatever else, right. we get we get too hung up in what the tool has available. Um, that 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 it sort of prevents us from doing work. And don't worry about whether it's a story or an epic or a yeah. task. It's your own personal to do list, right? Just get some stickies, throw them on a wall, and if you're working on it, put it in a to do column. And if it's done, throw it away, right? Get it, clear it out. Um, do hold your own sort of retro, right? Wh whatever that means to you. Whether it's sort of a daily inspection of what you got done, or end of the week, or whatever it is. Um, you know, I like to use color codes, but don't overcomplicate it. I do that just because it helps me visually. I'm a, I'm a visual person. Um, and I guess sort of the last thing, you know, just remember this is, I mean, we're scrum masters, right? We do agile scrum, but this right. isn't scrum. This is more of a flow, right? It's, it's, it's as you work, you're not, you're not committing to getting something done in the next iteration, unless right. you want to commit that to yourself. 
but you know if you want to commit that you get something done within a week or two weeks then that's fine but it's, it's right. you're you're doing it with yourself um so i want i want to add to some of this too like and if you set it up in a certain way and it's not working change it yeah that's one of the coolest things about this it's not like you have to keep doing it a certain way if the thing isn't working like for me with the notebook change it right nobody and and if you want to make it all pretty like we taught kanban to a group of uh girl scouts that were like 10 years old in oklahoma and they all um bedazzled their boards like covered them with stickers and new sparkles and stuff it make it fun in any way you can because that'll that'll kind of entice you back to it and it shouldn't be it should never be a chore i find that the retros start to feel like a chore like something i have to do instead of something i want to do which is probably it trying to tell me that i need to change the way i'm doing my retros but um there's a book on that (laughs) (laughs) but i think for the people that are listening this is a way you can start to run these kind of experiments and adopt agile practices into your own life and that will help you feel more confident if you're new to this stuff when you're interacting with people at work at least you'll have some sense of like some context when we talk about stuff or you have some awareness of how things can be challenging in one way or another and that can help you have more empathy for the people you're working with so it's always, and you may become more efficient. So this was really cool. Um, anything else you want to add? Any any words of advice for people with this stuff? No, I mean, just, as I said, just keep it simple. Complicate it only as much as you want to complicate it, right? Um, it's real easy to make a million colors and assign yourself stuff and put Couple deadlines metrics. And all metrics yeah. and all that. like you can do all that but if that's not actually helping you get stuff done it's don't, in the way it's in the way right yeah but yeah cool. if you feel like you it's too complicated and you're going to go back to your notebook simplify it cool all right and if they want to get in touch with you with questions about this or to book your band yeah so if you want to book the band <laughs> Um, you can, uh, you can reach me at, uh, MD Hodgton at gmail.com and it's M D H O D G D O N at gmail.com. Okay. And if you're interested in, in aspirant and what we do there, it's mark.hodgton at aspirant.com. All right. And I will include links to that end to the band in the notes of the podcast. So awesome. dude, thank you very much for doing this. This was great. It was a lot of fun. Thanks Dave. If you learn to work the old way, but the new way is what you need. My job's to make the